and only mode. Good evening, everybody. It is a beautiful day here in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I am joined by uh, my friend in uh, upstate New York, if I'm not mistaken, correct? No, back in Pittsburgh now. Just came out of uh, the... Oh, uh, you're in Pittsburgh. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Kennywood. That's probably my favorite music park in the country. Yep, and it's got a lot of historical little rides on it. So. Yep, there's. I have yet to ride a better roller coaster than the Thunderbolt, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay. Um, and the Jackrabbit's pretty cool, too. Um, but uh, this is the Option Pit, uh, a special presentation. Um we're joined by uh, my friend and uh, author of uh, High Profit uh, Candlestick Charts. That's correct. Is that the d correct name of the book? High, High Profit Candlestick Patterns. That's, yeah. That was, that was the second book. Yeah. First book was Profitable Candlestick Trading with uh, uh, done through uh, Wiley and Sons. Yeah. And uh, if you didn't know uh, by now that... The voice that is not grating and digging into your ears like nails on a chalkboard is uh, my good friend Stephen Bigelow. He's going to join us to talk about uh, charting and uh, candlestick charting. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a little outside of what we do normally here, but, but I think that's a good thing. And it's important to, to pull in people that have different perspectives and different views. So uh, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to pass the ball to... Stephen, and he's going to uh, talk to us a little bit about candlestick charting. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, and welcome to Option Pit. Oh, thank you, Mark. And uh, let me show the screen now. Hopefully, the screen is up. It is indeed. I can see that uh, that beautiful mug. All right. And uh, and uh, all of your different books. All right. Now, what I usually do, if you're going to be watching, is uh, if you get people that are, want to ask questions, ask them why I'm blazing away here. Um, and if there's something that's too difficult to get now, I will be glad to stay as long as there's questions after the session. So, uh, yeah, if you've got a question, uh, feel free to ask it. And uh, uh, Mark, if you want to just interrupt me and read it, or if there's a few of them that come or accumulate, just go ahead and read them to me and I'll answer them as fast as Will I can. Will do. All right, well, I've been in the investment uh, business for over uh, 35 years now. Uh, when I graduated from college, I thought it would be so uh, uh, neat to be uh, sipping mint juleps on the back of rich uh, clients' yachts uh, in the Fort Lauderdale Basin. So I became a stockbroker. The disappointing thing that I found out, though, was that with all the analysts on Wall Street, they don't have any oh, any idea what makes a stock go up any more than we did at the time. And unfortunately, we, being the uh, outside customers, <coughs> didn't have access to all the information that we have today where we can make our own decisions. So <coughs> I got out of the business. I was buying, renovating, and selling uh, houses in Atlanta, Georgia. When somebody dropped candlesticks on my desk and said, you were a stockbroker, tell me what you think of these. And I figured anything as sophisticated sounding as candlesticks shouldn't, uh, shouldn't warrant any of my time. But he kept bugging me. And then when I picked it up and started looking at it, I kept thinking, this makes sense. And the more I looked at it, the more sense it made. So I started using it. And uh, fortunately, after I got, I got out of the brokerage business because I was probably the worst investor in the world. When we had all these, uh, I had all these old saying that uh, when the public starts buying, that's the time to sell. Or where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top or panic sell at the bottom. That was me. <coughs> so I started learning about candlesticks on my own. Unfortunately, I was doing it at a time when there wasn't anybody else around using candlesticks. So. I didn't have anybody out there to give me a second opinion on learning this stuff. I tell people the only time I got a second opinion was when I went to the doctor. I'd say, what's wrong with me? And he'd say, you're fat. i say, I think I want a second opinion. He goes, all right, you're ugly, too. So I started uh, learning about candlestick signals, and I discovered 
that when I asked people in the chat rooms that were just starting back then, and which weren't anything more than uh, high school food fights online, I asked, kept asking the question, why isn't everybody using candlestick signals? And the answer kept coming back, there was too many of them and they didn't always work. Well, I kept going on the premise that if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. And as I went through studying them, which I wanted to study every single one of them because I wanted to obviously find out where the reversals were, if these worked correctly. But I discovered out of the 50 or 60 signals, there was only 12 of them that worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these kind of as a quick uh, uh, cliff note kind of uh, presentation. So don't bother taking notes. You can have whatever information you want afterwards. And I've got a, a special that I've worked out with Mark that you won't be able to refuse. Uh, so anyways, what I discovered when trading stocks was that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's all candlesticks are, is the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. And the most important aspect of candlestick analysis is that the signals are the result of the cumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a particular time frame. Now, what we're going to be looking at mostly on charts here is that we're on the daily time frame. But candlestick signals work just as effectively on the one minute, five minute, 15 minute chart as they do on the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. So the basics are that the Japanese rice traders did is something different than what the notches are in bar charts. They enclose the open and the close. If it opens here and closes here, it creates a white candle. If it opens here and closes down here, it creates a dark candle. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the price was up or down on the day. All that meant was this is what happened after the open. So the 12 major signals are these, and I won't even bother reading them because we're going to go through them. But the most important one, or the most important aspect of candle, about candlestick signals is what are the signals and patterns looking for? And that's basically showing us when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. And what is going to create a high profit price move over and above just a, an uptrend or a downtrend. So a lot of people will show you, yeah, we made great money or uh, we, we recognize when it was time to buy these uh, strong up moves. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what created the uh, pretense for that strong price move. And that's basically the uh, individual signals telling us what's going on in investor sentiment. <coughs> we also, uh, while we're here, uh, as you can see, I've got very simple uh, indicators on my charts. I've got the 200, the 50, and the 20 simple moving averages. And the reason for that is every major money manager around the world uses these moving averages to, uh, 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 to make their decisions on their portfolio. But the most important one that we have is this black one. This is what we call the T-line or the 8 exponential moving average. And basically it boils down to a very simple trading process that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you stay in it until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. I use stochastics to tell me whether I'm overbought or oversold. My stochastic settings are at 12.33. That's nothing that's set in stone. It's just over the last uh, 30 years of using candlesticks, tweaking the stochastics to find where they uh, work the best or show the, uh, the bottom or the top uh, 1233 seem to work the best. Now I'm a swing trader. My average trade lasts somewhere between two and ten trading days. So the doji is the most uh, well-known uh, signal in candlesticks. And it's where it opens and closes right about the same level. A small hey, doji uh, Stephen, is a doji the, uh, star. Stephen, the price movement was pretty. Stephen, yep. the uh, the app moving averages yep. you Go use ahead. are they the moving averages you use are they EMA or SMA? Uh, the the 200, the 50, and the 20 are simple moving averages. The T line, the eight exponential, or is the or the eight exponential moving average is the T line. All right. So if you've got a big price movement during the day, and it still closes at the same level, that's called a long-legged doji. 
a dragonfly doji opens at the top, trades down, and comes back and closes at the top. Uh, looks like a dragonfly. Gravestone doji is where the Japanese rice traders say the warriors come out of camp, go into battle. At the end of the day, they're beaten back into camp, leaving their dead all over the field. Thus, the gravestone. And a <coughs> small derivative of the uh, of the uh, doji is what we call a spinning top, where there's a little body. But they all represent the same thing. They represent that there's indecision going on between the bulls and the bears. So not only did the Japanese rice traders identify what should happen, but they gave us simple rules that if you see a doji at the top, it's time to sell. If you see a doji at the bottom, you need bullish confirmation to tell you that the, uh, there's been a reversal. Otherwise, the Japanese rice traders say that the weight of the market could keep the trend moving down. Always pay heed whenever you see a doji. And here's the one that will make you tons of money. The trend will usually move in the direction of how they open it after the doji. So being the worst investor in the world, candlestick analysis turned my investing around 180 degrees because I could see the common sense aspects of investing in the charts. When you start seeing a uh, big trading up at the top in the overbought area, you start looking for a sell signal. If you see a doji in the overbought area, if it opens lower the next day, you close out the position. Now, there's one caveat to the uh, T-line, that the further you move away from the T-line, the higher the probability you're going to come back and test it. So if you see a doji or see a candlestick signal a good distance away from the T-line, stochastics in the overbought area, be ready to start taking profits. The worst case scenario is it's going to come back, test the uh, key line and start back up, and that's what we call a J-hook pattern, which I'll show real quickly before we're finished. <coughs> also, if you see a gap up at the top and see a doji, it's time to take profits. That's an exuberant buying. Um, oh, I think this was, are we, are we, are we recording this, uh, Mark? We are, yes, we are, we are. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, so if you see a gap up in the overbought area and see a doji, it's time to take profits because that's an exuberant buying at the top. Now, that was usually me in the good old days is everything looked rosy, everything was getting great, and bam, it was time. They were skyrocketing. That was usually me buying here and wondering why the heck I always bought at the very top. Anytime you see that uh, doji up here in the overbought areas, and especially if they open it lower the next day, you want to get out immediately. Gap up in the overbought area, start looking to take profits. Uh, this is just this. Most people uh, are told by money managers, stay away from gaps. You don't know what's going on. Gaps and candlestick signals are your best friends. You know exactly what's going on. You know there's either exuberant buying or indecision followed by that decision. Tells you exactly which way they're going to take the trend. The bigger um, the signal. Hey, uh, Stephen, how important is volume with these? Uh, none. Unless you happen to see volume on a day where you, there's an actually a reversal signal, volume, we're not buying volume, we're buying price. And volume has nothing to do with price. Everybody says, oh, we want to see the volume go up as the price goes up. Volume and price have nothing to do with each other. If, if people are trying to buy a stock and nobody's willing to sell it, that means that price is going to go up and it's going to be on lower volume. The only time you get a little extra fluffy is on a day of a reversal or a reversal signal. If you see big volume, that basically tells you the weak have sold into the strong or the strong have uh, sold back into the, uh, into the weak. The longer that signal is or the bigger that signal is, a long-legged doji opening lower the next day, close out the position immediately. Take your profits. If one Long-legged doji means indecision. A series of long-legged dojis means indecision. Means there's probably going to be a change of investor sentiment going the other way. Now, this is not rocket science. This is just the accumulative uh, results of what the Japanese rice traders observed over 400 years of trading. The family that did this, or the trading family that did this in Japan, did not become wealthy. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the powerhouse, financial powerhouse for uh, Japan for centuries. So everything that we're looking at is their, their 
common sense put into a graphic depiction. You see a doji at the top followed by a gap down. That tells you not only is there indecision up here, but they are anxious to get out of this trade, and uh, that's the time to go short. See a gap up in the overbought condition, then a gap down. It's time to get out of that trade. An abandoned baby is that one-day island reversal. Will you take it up? They gap it up, and then gap it right back down. That's one of your strongest reversal signals. The gap up, followed by a bearish engulfing, and gap down. It's time to be out of that trade. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. You just watch which way they decide to take that, uh, that trend. So again, a doji at the top, take profits. Dojis at the bottom, you want to see bullish confirmation the next day uh, to tell you that the bulls have now taken control. Now, here's one of the uh, questions is, all right, if the simple rule is that an uptrend doesn't start until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Notice how far away you've moved from the T-line. So if we see a bullish confirmation, we can be buying with the realization that even if it came up here and failed, we're coming back out of a failed trade with a small profit, we go on to the next one. But we've got a candlestick buy signal occurring when stochastics are in an oversold area, a good distance away from the T-line. The worst we can do is get out uh, by a failure of the T-line. If it goes through, you hang on until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. <clears throat> that gap down in an oversold condition tells you that's where everybody has panic sold. The question you always have to ask is if everybody's panic selling at the bottom, who the heck is buying? And it's usually the smart, uh, smart money that whatever they knew the news was going to be started selling here and probably when the news was announced, Everybody panic sold, and the uh, only fundamental analysis that I do is if there's a problem with a company, by the time they announce it, they're already working on a solution. So when they announce it, the smart money is buying because they know the next announcement is going to be a uh, positive announcement. If you see that uh, doji type signal and a gap up the next day, it tells you exactly what you want to know. They've started an uptrend. They gap it down in the oversold area, start looking for buy signals, especially after a doji. And if one doji means indecision, remember a series of doji means greater indecision, and then we have a bullish confirmation closing above the T-line, makes it very simple. If it opens positive, we want to be buying because that tells us the bulls are still there. And it also breaks this down trending channel telling us we're in a ne the next wave to the upside. If we see it occur where everybody else is watching, pulls back right to the 200-day moving average, we can see immediately what's going on in investor sentiment. Somebody asked me the other day, how many days do you need to confirm that the trend is reversed? None. All you need to do is see a doji in near the oversold area, and they open up positive the next day. That tells you exactly what's happening. They've, they've confirmed the reversal signal. <laughs> Again, a gap down in the oversold area, start looking for a buy signal. A reverse, potential reversal signal in the oversold area followed by a gap up, you want to be buying immediately. It's basically your abandoned baby on the bottom side. So again, remember, doji at the top take profits. Dojis at the bottom requires bullish confirmation. If one doji means indecision, a number of dojis means greater indecision. And the part that will make you tons of money is the trend will usually move in the direction of how they open the, uh, open the price the next day. Now, you can use a doji also with combinations. This is what we call our left-right combo, which is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Or in other words, a little uh, uh, indecisive uh, jab followed by a big right hook. Um, that usually starts a very strong uptrend. A doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal, which we'll get to these signals here in a minute tells you that it's a very strong indication they've decided to take it down. Um, Left-right combo right on a 50-day moving average with stochastics. All right, Stephen, I got, a couple of, up, I got a couple of decent questions. Closes. I got a couple of decent questions for you, okay? Go right ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, does after hours trading uh, go into forming a doji? Uh, not necessarily. You, all, you have to remember that uh, very, very little volume occurs uh, percentage-wise compared, and that's what you're basically seeing the next day is the big volume. 
So I pay very little attention to what uh, what occurs after hours. Okay. Um, and uh, somebody had asked about what a T-line is. Um, I think you described that a little earlier. Right. Uh, the you can catch line the, is the, yep. the T-line the is the... Sorry. Yep. Oh. That's right. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. It's got to be something along the same nature as a... Uh, Oh, the Fibonacci numbers where it's a natural uh, uh, reoccurring situation with human emotions. Um, but if you, if, I mean, this is something you don't have to even take my word for. Put an eight exponential moving average on your charts and see how often it maintains the uptrends and maintains the downtrends. All right. All right. Uh, Bullish engulfing signals, where they open it below the previous day's close and they close it above the previous day's open. The white candle completely engulfs the black body of the previous day. Not necessarily the shadows, just the body. And this essentially tells you there's been a definite change of investor sentiment. You're usually going to start to see an uptrend after that. The bigger the signal, the more convincing that your uptrend is, is going to be in progress. Again, the bigger the signal and the close above the T-line, more evidence that the uh, the bulls have taken control. Here's that left-right combo. This makes it very simple. Um, in the 35 years I've been in the investment business, we always hear the sage advice from most money managers that says, cut your losses short and let your profits run. And in the 35 years I've been in the business, I've never heard one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Very simple rules with candlestick analysis does that for you. So okay. it also makes. Hey, I got go a ahead. couple of got a couple of decent ones here. Um, right. You know, uh, guy points out: is that a contradiction that volume after hours uh, invalidates price action, but no volume during regular hours doesn't really matter? Or is it the fact that is your point that even low volume during regular hours is way bigger than after hours? Is, uh, exactly. I, yeah, there if. There's when I, I don't trade after hours because uh, uh, there's just not enough volume out there. <laughs> Remember, we're trading on the candlestick signals based upon what it's doing from open to close. How they trade after hours is already going to be built into next day's signal. So if they're already trading up uh, after hours, the next day they're going to open it at a higher price, which means you're going to have a gap up which yep. means that's where you're going to be buying. So that's, that price action after hours is going to be built into the uh, price as it opens the next day. Yeah. Um, so a uh, couple of questions. So on the day after a doji, how many minutes should you watch the market to see in which direction the market is heading? Uh, I usually wait maybe three. If, I, if, if things are working out the way they should, for example, let's say we think the market is going to be opening higher tomorrow. And we saw a candlestick buy signal through one of our scans. Now, my scans take less than 20 minutes each afternoon to go through the 7,500 trading entities to get to the best one or two trades the next day. And I did that mainly because I thought the perfect way to invest was that you spent 20 minutes each evening looking for the, next, the best trades the next day. Market opens. You trade for 45 minutes establishing your trades. Go play golf for the rest of the day. Come back 30 minutes before the market closes and close out any trades that weren't working. Okay. Which was a great, great strategy. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get onto a golf course for more than five years now. <laughs> but the idea is that this is, again, not rocket science. The scans that you can set up for candlestick identifying the re reversal signals, once you have them set up, it takes you less than 10, 15 minutes each night to go through the scans real quick and find the best best trades. Now, did I answer? I forgot what question I was answering. Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on. I'm just going to slam a couple of these, then we'll, we'll let you run. Okay. Um, how have algos changed, uh, changed candlestick charting? Have they had a big effect? No. Remember, right. it's still the, the cumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during the day. So uh, remember, we're trading off of investor sentiment no matter what other... Uh, uh, indicators they they add or subtract to it. Okay, cool. We'll we'll hit this next one at the end. Why don't you uh, 
Keep moving. Okay, let's see, where was it? All right, left-right combo. Uh, there's some very simple entry and exit strategies that allow you to get in right at the right time with a high probability you're in the correct trade uh, and tell you when to get out at the, the correct time. The bearish engulfing signal is the opposite, obviously, of the bullish engulfing. It opens above the previous day's close and closes below the previous day's open, the black body completely engulfing the white body of the previous day. The bigger this signal is, the more compelling the reversal is going to be. There's that left-right combo a good distance away from the T-line. It's time to start taking profits and probably looking to go short. Here's a very simple uh, profit-taking technique. Where do we know that most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So if we see a gap up in the overbought condition and they open it and take it higher, I simply put a sell stop one tick below where it opened. The rationale being if they've taken it up and there's something good happening, it's going to keep going. But if they bring it back down through the open, that tells me that was probably an exhaustion day. I want to be out of it because probably before the end of the day, there's going to be some sort of candlestick sell signal forming uh, that day. On the other hand, if they open it and immediately start selling it off, I put my stop at the previous day's close because if they can have enough force to come back down through that level after gapping it up, that tells me again the sellers are starting to take control and there's going to be some sort of candlestick sell signal. So I'm not trying to buy at the absolute bottom or sell at the absolute top. I'm trying to get that fat part in the middle and then compound that uh, one right after the other. There's that left-right combination, a bearish engulfing signal after a doji, and a good distance away from the T-line tells me it's time to take profits. Now, the biggest fear that most investors have is, boy, what if I sold this out and took some profits, and it took off again, and it went up another 50 points? Boy, would I look stupid. Well, candlestick analysis alleviates that problem because it tells you when it's time to sell. If it comes back down here and shows a buy signal and starts doing what we call a J-hook pattern off the T-line, we can always buy back in. We don't necessarily, if a trend goes up 20 points, if I can make 17 points out of that, knowing that every time it was time to sell, I got out, and every time it told me to buy, I got back in, I don't mind giving up some for that insurance that I'm always uh, moving in the direction of the way I should be moving. If I see a sell signal exactly at a resistance level, like the 200-day moving average, there's that doji bearish engulfing. That pretty much tells me with them rolling over the stochastics, that's where everybody else is watching, and I can see immediately that they're not going through. Left-right combo right here at the 50-day moving average. We can already see that we're in a downtrend, and if they've come up and failed at the 50, that tells me I want to be short looking for the next uh, bottoming action or bottom signal. The only formula that you have to know in candlestick analysis is the number two. And that's here in the hammer signal. The tail is two times greater than the body. The body can either be white or black, but you have a downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. They take it down, and by the end of the day, they bring it back up to where the tail is two times greater than the body. That's basically the Japanese rice traders saying the bears have hammered out the bottom, and then the bulls have stepped in and reversed the trend. If you see a hammer, especially right here on the T-line. If they open up positive the next day, that tells you exactly what's happened, is that they reversed it and they're starting to uh, start the next uptrend. Hammer, doji, bullish confirmation. I want to be buying on any signs of uh, buying after that signal. Again, a further away you move from the T-line, you've got a hammer signal, stochastics in the oversold area. If they open up positive, where's your first target? Probably up here. Even if you fail, you may still make a 3 or 4% move. Uh, if it fails the T-line, if it goes through, you've got the probabilities. This is a, you've got a high probability situation that you're buying at the bottom. Also, it has very simple ramifications as far as what your stop losses are. If this is the signal that told us that it's time to be buying, and it opens positive the next day and goes up, and you buy into it, and then closes back down below the head of the uh, signal, that pretty much tells you the bears are still in control. You want to be right back out of that trade. So quite often, people ask me, what's the percentage of correct trade ratio? And I w I'm guessing now that I'm maybe at somewhere between 65 and 70% of my trades are positive. That doesn't necessarily mean they're big positive. They're just going to be positive. But in the good old days, when I was smarter than everybody else, 
I figured if I put on a trade, it was because my extra smart analysis told me that price should be going up. And when it didn't go up, I would hold on to it, waiting for the rest of the people that weren't quite as smart as I was to recognize why they should be buying it and make it go back up. And uh, that's where I lost tons of money. What do most people do? If the price, if they buy something that goes up, what's their first fear? That it goes negative and they think, man, oh man, I better get out of this quick because if I let this turn into a loss, boy, would I look stupid. So they cut their losses or they cut their profits short. On the other hand, if they buy something and immediately goes down, what's their first inclination? Uh, as soon as this gets back up to break even, I'm going to get out of it. And it keeps going down, keeps going down until it gets, goes down so so bad you can't stand the pain anymore and you sell out at the bottom. That's called eating like a bird and pooping like an elephant. So fortunately, candlestick signals told me when it was time to buy and when it was time to sell. So if I buy something, I hang on to it until I see that sell signal. This is a hanging man signal, the opposite of the hammer. Basically, his head up at the top, his leg is dangling down. The bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, and then all of a sudden they have a doubtful day, but by the end of the day they bring it back up toward the top of the trading range. The bulls say, shoot, that was a close one. Next day they open it lower, the bulls say, shazam, here the bears are in here again. Let me close out the position, and that starts, starts your downtrend. Hanging man. Opening lower the next day, it's time to take profits. Hanging man, hanging man, doji, bearish engulfing, closing below the T-lines, stochastics rolling over. This is all the indications you need to tell you that that's the bears are starting to take over. And where else did it happen? Right exactly the same place that it popped out before. This is the piercing signal. The piercing signal is different than the bullish engulfing in that it gaps down below any of the previous day's trading and then closes, again, that number two, more than halfway up the previous day's candle. That tells you the bulls now have started taking control, and you're going to be in for a strong uptrend. Like any other candlestick signal, the bigger the signal, the higher the probability you're going to have a strong uptrend. Uh, and the deeper they open it down here and come back up into the highest point up in here, but again, just more confirmation that there's been a change of investor sentiment. The opposite of the piercing is called the dark cloud. It's where they gap it up above the previous day's trading and close it more than halfway down that candle. And this, is, again, is where it's very effective when they gap it up. Take it up this way, you put your sell stop here. Or if they gapped it up and opened it here and immediately started selling off, you put your sell stop there. This one did a dark cloud by closing more than halfway down this candle, starting that downtrend. The bigger the signal, the more compelling your downtrend is going to be starting. Again, the bigger the signal, the more uh, it's telling you there's been a change of investor sentiment. Shooting star. Looks like a shooting star. There's the body with a tail two times greater than the body coming down out of the sky. Notice how far away it is from the T-line. If it opens lower the next day, you close out the position. If they gap it up, again, that exuberance at the top and do a shooting star type doji, Take profits. They're going to be bringing it back down. We don't know whether they're going to stop here at the T-line and go back up or whether they're going to keep right on going. So why take the risk? This is just a high probability situation that's time to get out of that trade. Um, you know, the, again, this is from hundreds of years of observations. That tail to the upside tells you the bears are starting to, to come in. The bulls are starting to lose control. If you see more than one tail to the upside, the probability that the uh, bears are starting to win is that much more compelling. The bigger the signal, the more you want to be out of it uh, fast as soon as you see it open lower the next day. And if you see it occur right on a major resistance level, like the 50-day moving average, that tells you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment once it got to that level. The inverted hammer is the opposite of a uh, shooting star in that the bears are happy, the bears are happy, the bears are happy. They're, Ooh, they're a little bit nervous, but by the end of the day, they're happy. And the next day, the bulls step in and trade it back up. The bears say, shoot, the bulls are here again. Get me out of this position. And that starts your uptrack. Very, very, this one, I, it doesn't occur as much as the rest of them, the rest of the major signals. But when it does, you've probably got a 95% chance that it's going to be a positive trade after that. 
The other side of the coin is, if we know that there's a 95% chance this should be going up, we know immediately that if this opens up positive and trades back down below the head of this signal that told us uh, there's some doubt, we get out of the trade right away. That tells us the bears are still in control. The bigger this signal, again, the, the more compelling you're going to have an uptrend. There's your, this is what we call a bullish harami. It opens inside the previous day's close and closes inside the previous day's open. Uh, in Western terminology, called the inside day. Harami in Japanese means pregnant woman. There's her body with a little belly sticking out. And it basically tells you that the selling has stopped. You look for positive trading the next day. That tells you you started your uptrend. Very simple also. If it opens positive, it shouldn't close more than halfway down this candle because this is the candle that told us the bulls are starting to take control. And if you see that uh, Harami followed by a gap up, that tells you not only has the uh, selling stopped, but the bulls are jumped back in with great enthusiasm. And that's exactly where you want to be in an oversold condition with a bullish signal that's getting the gap up. That tells you you're going to have a strong uptrend after that. Where do people panic sell? Panic sell at the bottom, big candle, the next day a bullish harami followed by a gap up and a close above the T-line. That's when you start uh, buying this position. Just very simple. That if this is your bullish harami, what are we looking for the next day to tell us the bulls are in control? A bullish candle. And if they close up above the, uh, the T-line, that tells you we had a candlestick reversal signal that's confirmed. But the following day, if they close back down below the halfway point of the candle that told us the bulls were taking control and close below the T-line, that tells us immediately, get out of the position. This one is not working. Bearish harami is where they open it inside the previous day's close and close it inside the previous day's open, essentially telling us the buying has stopped. Start looking for a reversal. Bearish harami and a close back below the T-line. Stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. That bearish harami followed by a gap down tells you not only has the buying, or the buying stopped, that gap down tells us the selling was coming in with great force. They were knocking it down pretty hard. Anytime, this is a morning star signal, a three-day uh, signal with a big down day, dark down day, a doji, then the third day, it closes above the halfway point of this candle. Now, a couple things that make this more powerful. If they gap it up after a doji on the third day and close it way above the halfway point of this candle, that tells us we're going to have a very powerful uptrend. It's a very symmetrical signal. Big down day, a day of indecision. Third day closes more than halfway up that candle. And if they gap it up on the third day, that much more strength coming into the, uh, the new trend. So it's very simple also. If we see a morning star signal, what do we expect the next day? Bullish confirmation. If we jump the gun and we're buying before this closes, and it closes back down here, by this day, either the bulls aren't there or they are there. If they're there, they're taking it up. If they aren't there, they should not be taking it back down through the halfway point of this candle. If they can do that, that pretty much tells us the sellers are still in control to close out the position immediately. So this was a very simple uh, trend analysis for the uh, Dow a while back. Notice what we had here, that big, huge, like a two or 300 point day down below the 200, well in the oversold area. And you can imagine at this point, you had every uh, person, uh, every talking head saying, oh, the terrible economy, things are bad. And we closed it right back above the uh, 200. What would we expect if this was going to be a signal? Basically, if we wake up the next morning, the, the pre-market futures are positive, we're buying with both feet. And that's exactly what we did on that day, because that told us essentially that if they were bulls coming in after a big reversal signal, we want to be in it. We didn't have to wait for it to confirm anywhere up here. We were buying on the open, because we knew after a big doji hammer type signal, if it opened positive and traded positive, we had a good possibility of creating, creating a more new star signal. Um, this is where I kind of take a step back and say, uh, here's there are very simple rules of the moving averages acting as re support and resistance. My late buddy uh, Dave Elliott called this the blue ice failure. If you fell through the ice, you come back up, you look for where the hole you fell through. If you can't find it, 
you drown and you go to the bottom of the pond. So this is a very high probability uh, uh, short uh, uh, trend. Then it says a candlestick buy signal, a, star, a morning star signal. Where does it go to? Exactly to the 50. When it pulls back, where should it be going back to? Probably the 200. However, we have a morning star signal in here that tells us they aren't taking it back. Now we have what we call the T-line crunch. Notice how the T-line kept pushing the uh, bottom of these up through the, uh, the 200. On this day right here, with a little bit of indecision, it becomes very simple. If it opens positive the next day, or the pre-market future showing it was opening positive, that's exactly what we want to know is they're going to go through. We're buying aggressively on that day. Essentially, using candlestick signals, knowing what the signals are and where to look for them, just kind of gives you a much more clear roadmap uh, of when you should be buying and when you should, you should be selling. Morning star signal, an oversold area, a good distance away from the T-line. You want to be buying, especially on a gap up the next day. If they close it above the T-line, you hold it until you see some candlestick sell signals getting ready to pull back to the T-line. The evening star signal is the opposite, big candle, green candle, a day of indecision. The third day, you have it closed more than halfway down that candle. Just a very symmetrical up day, indecision day, down day tells you there's been a change of investor sentiment. The bigger that uh, signal, evening star signal, and a close below the T-line, you're in a downtrend until you see a candlestick buy signal, a bullish harami, and then you can see whether it's going to test the uh, T-line or not. If it fails, you can always go re or reshort the position. Otherwise, you stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. This is the strongest of all our signals, the kicker signal. Am I over time? I hope uh, I'm just kind of my my uh, oh, my clock is covered up because I got the screen over it. Are we still all right, Mark? It is uh, six forty-three Central Time, seven forty-three Eastern. So uh, okay. uh, you got a couple We're minutes on. here. You're doing okay. fine. All right. Kicker signal, you have a downtrend. Then they open the last day here and close it down here. The next day, they gap it up and they open it at or above the previous day's open and go the opposite direction. They've basically kicked the investor sentiment in the opposite direction, which is usually going to result in a very strong and long price move. The uh, bearish kicker signal moves up, moves up. Last day, they open it, take it up. Next day, they gap it down below the previous day's open and take it the opposite direction. The further they gap this up, the longer and stronger this uptrend is going to be. So anytime I see a gap up after a uh, bearish candle, I'm buying immediately because I know the probabilities are that they're going to still be taking this up uh, quite a bit afterwards. Anytime I see a kicker signal, now a true kicker signal should not have a tail below the green part. But the fact that they do, still doesn't diminish what the whole signal tells you, that there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment that it's going to be an uptrend. This was using me, that I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm looking for a strong move to the upside. The next day they gap it down below the previous day's open. My first thought is, oh man, hopefully they'll take it up enough where I can get out and then let it go down. If they are gapping it down below a, the low of a previous day's candle, that tells you there's something that the, the bears are in control. You don't want to be in it anymore. So gaps represent great enthusiasm to get into a position, and it pays out very well, especially if you know what signals uh, you should be looking for prior to that. Uh, and they're great for identifying panic selling at the bottom and exuberant buying at the top. If you're always afraid of grabbing for the fallen knife, Candlestick signals basically tell you when there's been a reversal and it's time to be buying. And that gap up, anytime you see a gap up from a doji, you want to be buying immediately because the probabilities are going to be very strong that you're in an uptrend. So knowing what each signal represents, you can build it into patterns or identify the uh, candlestick patterns. And the reason we have the patterns is because if there's an uptrend, you're going to make a heck of a lot more money trading an upward trending pattern than you are a uh, uh, just an uptrending stock. Do we always buy stocks that we can get in one day at 15 and get out at 45 two days later? Not always, but with candlestick signals, it shows you the setup where the probabilities are 
that you're in an uptrend and makes the possibility of being in a very strong move like this that much greater. Uh, and we want to know how to identify whether a pullback is a pullback versus a full-scale reversal. And that's why we use the, the J-hook pattern. It's a very profitable pattern. The prerequisite is it has a very strong price move. Then you see some profit taking. But here, we don't know whether it's profit taking or they're going to take it all the way back down or whether we're about ready to see a J-hook. And we can tell by the uh, nature of the candlestick signals of whether the J-hook pattern is setting up. Once the J-hook J -hook pattern sets up, we know what our parameters are. We see what it does when it gets to the recent previous high, number one, if it breaks there, we know that wave one is going to be equivalent to wave three. This is a perfect way, once you see these patterns, to put on a uh, bullish call spread or uh, set up a good option trade. Fry pan bottom looks like a fry pan bottom. Very indecisive, junky trading. There was no way you could be trading this. But remember, we just went through a whole series saying if you see stochastics in the oversold area, that is different from the pattern. Where do we expect the pattern to break out when everybody has gotten to the overbought condition and everybody's enthusiasm is built back up? They're usually going to result in very high profit uh, uh, big moves. We also know the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to, if you see sell signals, they're going to come back and test the T-line. We made very good money on this, uh, this trade because as soon as we saw it close up above the uh, T-line with a little kicker signal, it stayed up there all the way up until we saw a shooting star and a gap down below the T-line. Then what happened? They came right back to the 50-day moving average. We saw a left-right combo close above the T-line, bought back in, and made very good money on the next trend up until it closed back below the T-line. This is the 10-minute chart, uh, I think, oh, on the Dow. The 10-minute chart looks just the same as a daily chart. If you're, if you're trading the YMs or... Uh, the E-minis, they work very effectively. I made lots of money trading the E-minis using the one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart combination. But the, you keep all your uh, indicators the same. The 200, the 50, and the, uh, I think this must be the 20 on here, a little bit different color, and the T-line all, all stay on those charts. And he, we made money on Mako a while back and kicker signal up above the T-line. Just gives you a time to when to get in. Here's a fry pan bottom. What do we expect uh, after a fry pan bottom? A breakout. Do we know when it's going to occur? No. So all we have to do is put a buy stop right in here. But if it comes up through there, that tells us it's breaking out and we're participating. A doji. Very simple rule. They've gapped it up to get a doji. That's telling us something. It also tells us if it opens positive the next day, we want to be buying immediately because they're probably going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. Uh, if we see that uh, fry pan bottom and a breakout through a resistance level, notice there's a doji right here on the 200-day moving average with stochastics coming up. makes this very simple. If it opens positive, that tells us a couple things, that it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji, number one. Number two, it also implies that they aren't stopping here at the uh, 200 anymore. We're probably going to be in another strong uptrend. This is a uh, cradle pattern, a big down day, indecisive flat trading. This day, a big day. Here's your headboard. Here's your bed. Here's your uh, footboard. A cradle down in between a, uh, uh, the branches of a uh, two trends. Uh, we recommended this one because notice once it got right back to the 50, it did a morning star signal and then broke out through the top of this channel, meaning if this was wave one, more than likely this is going to be wave three. Scoop pattern is very simple. It looks, has a flat handle, pulls back, and then all of a sudden slingshots out to the upside. So once it breaks through the handle, <coughs> usually there's going to be a very strong price move. Made money with the, what we call rounding bottoms. Notice how the rounding bottom just hugs the uh, T-line. Tells us there's a new investor sentiment building up. Do we get big pops like this every on uh, these? Not always. Sometimes it takes two or three days to get up there but it's a very good prelude to when a big price move is about to occur. This one, rounding bottom, gapped up again, and got us a good price trend. We can analyze the trend very simply just by the Japanese rice traders say, let the market tell you what the market is doing. We can analyze the tops and the bottoms of a trend. 
And right now, today, we are in this uptrend, and today it closed, the Dow closed just below the T-line. However, the NASDAQ still traded up above the T-line, traded above where it opened, and the S&P 500 uh, was smack dab flat. So if we see one index down, one index up, and one index flat, we basically know there's not been any change of investor sentiment. The current trend is going to remain in progress. And this was analyzing before. We were in a choppy market, and then they broke it out through the top. The NASDAQ was in a trend. So we can see what the market is telling us, when to be in and out, much quicker trades because the trends aren't lasting that long, or whether we want to be in our longs or we're in our long steady downtrend. This is one of our, what we call our steady eddy. You see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. You stay with it until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back down below the T-line. Does that mean it's time to go short? Not necessarily. It might mean that you're in a sloppy downtrend. Just because an uptrend has a sell signal doesn't mean it's now going to create a reversal signal. We did the same thing with uh, Dean Foods. A gap up, an open positive after the doji stayed above the T-line until we saw some selling and closed back below the T-line. Now, would this have been a good short? In this case, it would have been, but uh, the risk factor is much greater trying to short a stock that has just had a strong uptrend than it is seeing a stock that's in a steady downtrend that's had a pop to the upside. So the Dean Foods came all the way back down here, but notice what it did once it got to the uh, 200. We started buying down in here because it showed like it was going to do a good basing action. Bullish engulfing signal right on the 50-day or on the 200-day moving average basically stopped this downtrend. So if you had been short, this was the time to start covering your short and going long. Um, it started doing this basing action with the anticipation that if it broke through here, you could probably get up at least to the 50-day uh, the moving average, which would be a good percentage move. We were just up on Cuca Lake. I was given private training sessions, and a lot of our people that got out here got back in here, and they well paid for their training session just on that one trade because this is where we were starting to get back in again. This is where we got back out, a bearish Harami. And then today, we did a bullish Harami. We might be getting right back into it again. D-O-N-T, same scenario, all the symptoms of a good price pattern. Here's a T-line uh, crunch that once it sent through, had a nice steady uh, price move after that. This is another recent recommendation. We recommended this because of the cradle pattern that closed above the T-line. Notice that it couldn't close below the T-line. We even had a downgrade in this stock a few days ago. And my advice to everybody was that a downgrade is not anything more than one person's opinion that it's time to be selling. And all that's doing is altering the uh, supply and demand that day. But notice what it did by the end of the day. It closed back up above the T-line, and we're still heading up. So candlestick signals basically just puts you into situations where you have an extremely high degree of probability of being in the right direction at the right time. And you don't have to overanalyze candlesticks. They're just very simple visual analysis. I kind of equate it to the uh, lady that brings her parakeet into the vet and lays it down on the table and says, can you check out my parakeet? Uh, he's been my best friend for the last eight years and there's something wrong with him. And the vet says, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. And she goes, well, no, can't you do something to check just to make sure he's been my best friend? So he goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a cat, lays the cat next down and down to the next to the the parakeet. The cat sniffs it, looks up at the vet, kind of shakes his head. And he goes, "Ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead." She goes, "Oh no! Can can you make sure he he's been my best friend?" So he goes, "All right." Goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a great big Labrador retriever, comes bounding in, puts his paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, kind of looks up at the vet, kind of shakes his head. He goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. So they go out to the front desk. And he goes, all right, well, that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 just to tell me my parakeet's dead? 
He goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for 18 bucks. Then you wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So I tell people, you do not have to overanalyze candlestick signals. They're, they, all they are is the graphic depiction of investors uh, or investor sentiment. So I have discovered through the years that most people think that uh, candlestick signals are too hard to learn, and they aren't. So what I'm doing for Mark's group is I'm giving a special that you can't refuse. I've got 12 major signals, uh, about 45 minutes each on each one, showing you where they work, what confirming indicators make them work well, what the investor psychology was that created those signals. Once you have that information, you pretty well have the, a mastery of what makes prices move. That's a total of eight hours of training. We usually sell that for $581. But for a mere 12 buckaroos, 12 big ones, you're going to get that whole uh, training set that you can download. It's yours. You can study it as much as you want. But wait, there's more. We're also going to give you 30 days free trial to our website. Our website, candlestickforum.com, has a chat room that is open all day long during training hours. We usually have about 150 people in there with all levels of skills as far as uh, trading, whether it's swing trading long term or day trading. It's a place where you can go in and ask questions. Uh, you're going to get people helping you out. Uh, Monday nights, I do a private training session for the members going over what the market is doing, what uh, indicators seem to be working well, what signals seem to be working well. We do the same thing on Thursday night that's free to everybody. You also get uh, two or three training sessions during the month where we do free for members things like entry and exit strategies, what to, what to do to improve your probabilities of being in a, the correct trade at the correct time or getting out at the correct time, how to set up your scans, how to set effective stop losses. Basically, being the worst investor in the world, I've oriented everything to keep your emotions out of your trading. Um, if you're option traders, obviously you need to be investigating which underlying entities are going to give you the best price moves so you can apply the correct uh, options trades to it. And that's essentially what candlestick signals do. So for 12 easy bucks, and let me see if I've got the link right here. I think if you can see the link in the chat room, if you go to that link, um, that will get you the 12, 12 for 12. Now, there's a caveat to this, which we don't want to be uh, viewed as tricksters. That 30-day free trial, uh, you're all set up that if you like what you see, it continues uh, our normal uh, Trading rate or trading rate, uh, trading fee each month is not ninety-seven dollars. But you're already set up if you want to stay with it. But we also two or three days before your trial expires, we will put out notices saying uh, your trial is about ready to come to an end. If you don't want to be in it, click here and opt out. So we're not trying to trick people into using candlestick signals. What I'm trying to do is make people realize that probably candlestick signals in all the years I've used technical analysis is the most powerful and most uh, compelling to tell you when prices are changing or investor sentiment is changing so that those prices are changing. So uh, I hope everybody can see the link. And Mark, if you've got questions, I'll answer as many questions as people can sit in their chair and ask them before they fall over. Okay. All right. So let's start. Um, I've got a few to go through. Um, the good news is we did All hit right. a lot of them. Um, let's see. Let's start with... Uh, how do you identify good swing trade stock candidates? How do you identify high frequency of trend reversal or versus uh, overlapping or historical uh, overlapping historical prices? Um, very simply, when I do the scans, I'm looking for the things that showed us that we had big potential price moves, which obviously start with a signal in the oversold area. 
if I see a doji in an oversold area and I see a gap up the next day, that's my one of the first ones I go after. We know that the kicker signal is your strongest reversal signal. If I see a kicker signal set up, I'm going to go after that uh, immediately. Um, if I see a J-hook pattern uh, setting up, the second part of it, I'll go after that because I know what the measured move is going to be. It's going to be the same magnitude as wave one. So very simply, your scans each day are set up to see which, which trades, which stocks are bouncing off of moving average, bouncing off a trend line, uh, bouncing off Fibonacci numbers. The advantage we have with candlestick signals is we can identify where the investor sentiment is changing on anybody else's technique. If it's a Fibonacci number, we can see exactly what's happening at those levels. Now, I also want to add, too, that if you've already got a good trading technique, add candlesticks on top of it, and it will make you see dramatically more clearly when the reversals are occurring. Okay. Um, why are none of the candles in the charts that we're seeing empty? Uh, think or swim candlestick charts show both black and red, both filled and empty. Um, that is the wrong perception. Some of them want to be a little bit more fancy. Mm -hmm. a, black, a black signal might be that it was up on the day, but it was a down candle. Okay. And that's the wrong that's the wrong thing. It should just remain the two colors so you can analyze uh, very quickly what's happened that day. All right. How, bit, how, many, how many minutes are your candles? Daily, hourly, 30 minutes, 15? Uh, you, you can, if you're on a daily chart, it's a daily candle. If you're on a 30-minute uh, chart, it's a 30-minute candle. Uh, it's, you, can, you can look at the uh, charts on any time frame you want to, and those, uh, those candles will be that, that time frame. If you're on the one-minute chart, that means each candle is one minute. Right. Um, do you stop? What is your opinion about market makers running, uh, running the stops? Uh, that can happen occasionally. But you've got to remember, if you've got your stock in there and it's, it's at the, no, we set stops not based upon a formula or a uh, percentage. Uh, a lot of uh, money managers say, oh, you should set your stop 6% below where you bought it. The market doesn't give a hoot where you bought it. The market is going to reverse or support at levels that we can identify very easily. So we're putting our stops at a level that tells us this is where the bears should not be coming back down through. Um, and if they do, it's not because our, our stock was sitting there. It was probably because there's lots of other selling going on to get to that level. So unless you're trading a very, very thin tr trading stock, most of the time the stops are uh, are are not going to be hit by a money manager or a market. I'm sorry, a market maker, just because you have the stop there. It takes a lot of stock to get it to that level. All right. Um, on the other hand, yeah, on the other hand, I've been stopped out before and then saw them take it back up. That's part of the uh, game game or playing field. I just go ahead and buy the position back again. Okay. Um, what do you what do you do? You look for gap fills. What about gap fills? And uh, is your J hook uh, bull fills, against lag uh, pattern? Uh, let's see. Gap fills. Everybody says all gaps are going to be get filled, which they usually do. But when you see a gap up in an oversold condition, you're buying immediately because that gap may not be filled for two weeks, two months, two years, or two two decades. We're only interested in what the price is doing after that buy signal and the gap up. Um, if it comes back and fills it, uh, that means that gap or that uh, up move isn't going to be very strong. What was the second part of that question? Um, is your J-hook a bull or a bear flag pattern? Uh, you can see it in both directions. I mean, all it is is a wave one, wave two, wave three. The advantage we can see on wave two is whether it's a, a full reversal or whether after a few days we see indecisive trading and they start taking it back up we know immediately based upon the characteristics of the of the uh, individual signals during that pullback of whether it's a convincing sell-off or whether it was an indecisive sell-off waiting for the next uh, move to the upside all right do you trade options or higher price stocks in your chat room uh yes people trade all sorts of things uh Usually, I put out two or three stock picks every day, not so people have stock picks, 
but I do it on a video format so they can go in as, as a continued learning process. But I'll say, we are buying XYZ because it's doing this type of pattern. It's bouncing off of these moving averages. Uh, the stochastics are doing this. So you have a, a comprehensive learning process to see why those recommendations were made. Um, so I, I tell people that, and now, I, go ahead, go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, is there any advantage to candlestick versus bars? Why are they? Oh, you, you already. I think you already answered this. Um, yeah. Um, on your morning star patterns, don't you need gaps between the second candle for a to be a true reversal? No. All right. No, all you do really need is a down day, a, a big down day, a day of indecision, and a big up day that takes you more than halfway up the previous candle. A gap up that third day is that much more compelling that they've started coming back in with great relish uh, to get back into that upward position or upward trend. Okay. Um, what do you think of an Ichimoku cloud? Uh, they work effectively, but there are a lot. There, lots, that's a lot of hard work. Uh, again, we've tried to simplify everything. I have helped people do the. Uh, do the cloud process, um, but the best thing right now that I've discovered in every in everything we do, we, I mean, we had John Bollinger on a few weeks ago uh, doing the Bollinger bands. I think the T line is the most effective thing I have found ever as far as uh, telling you which direction a trend is going and how long it's going to last. All right. Um. So uh, for for hanging man candles, don't you need conf confirmation, i.e., a close below the tail for a reversal? Not, not below the tail. Just a lower open the next day. Yeah. Now, if if to modify my own ego, because what do we hate? We'd hate to sell something and have it go up fifty uh, points after we sold it. If I see a hanging man and I see it open lower the next day, I may close out half the position immediately. And then if it comes back down to the uh, bottom of the tail, I'll close out the other half. I can average those two closes, and I still got most of that uptrend. If I close half the position and it continues higher, I can rationalize in my own mind that I'm still in a very high-risk area in an overbought condition, starting to see candlestick sell signals, and I'm still making money with half the position as it continues higher. All right. Uh Let's see. Um, in, I'm just looking here. Uh, was that you use SMA 1020 and 200? Is that correct? Uh, SMA 200, the 50, and the 20. Okay. And then the uh, the T line is the eight exponential moving average. All right. Uh, and you intraday movement above T line or only closing prices? Uh, only closing prices. Remember, the Japanese rice traders boxed in the open and close because that's the final decision. <coughs> Everything in, else during the day is just noise. So I don't want to see a close below the T-line. Now, it can go below the T-line, but uh, oh, you, I'm, yeah, I'm probably even going to see that if the Dow moves higher tomorrow, it's going to be back up above the T-line after an indecisive day below it. So... Uh, you know, the, the, the open and the close are the most important aspects of a candlestick signal. All right. Do you recommend option positions in your live trading room, or is it only just kind of stocks that you're looking at? No. We, if we see something where, uh, let's say we see a J-hook pattern setting up, and we can measure where the top might be, we'll throw out that you might want to do a bull uh, call spread uh, using buying at 75 and selling the 80s. All right. Uh, th things like that. Thing, that is your... Thing. Is your form suitable for people living in other parts of the world? Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, you don't necessarily remember. This is the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling anything from stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, tulip bulbs, whatever you're buying that has human fear and greed in it, the candlestick signals are going to analyze it. So it does, doesn't need to be applied to the U.S. stock market. It can be applied to any stock or any trading entity out there anywhere in the world. Okay. 
Um, what do you candles? What do your candlesticks say about Groupon? That's a joke. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I haven't looked at Groupon for a while. Well, I can tell you, you're not looking at much if you do. Um, so I'm just looking through here. I've got some questions about documentation of P&L. I assume that if people have that. You want them to email you to ask that type of stuff. Yeah, and I don't have documentation on what our our uh, returns are because when we put up a recommendation of a stock, that means some people that day are going to be day trading it, some people are going to be swing trading it, and some people are going to be holding it for a longer swing trade. So there's no way to come back and say this is what the return is. All we're trying to demonstrate to people is where is the situation that has occurred hundreds if not millions of times in the past that this type of uh, signal or pattern has a high probability that it's going to move higher. We don't know whether it's going to move 2% higher or 200% higher. We just know we're in a situation right now where the probabilities are in our favor that we're, we're going to make a, a profit on that trade. Okay. Um, and, you know, one more, what are the settings for your stochastic indicator? I think you said they were three. You no, know, 1233. 1233. There you go. Right. Um, you know, aside from that, if people have other questions about your tracking and stuff like that, I assume you want them to just email you and you can answer all that. Just, yep, email steve at candlestickforum.com. Be glad to answer any questions you have. Absolutely. Um, Groupon Doji after downtrend. Do, uh, yeah, I think uh, the Doji for Groupon stands for downtrend uh, forever. I wish I had some really smart thing. Right. The same thing has happened in uh, Netflix. That even though Netflix... Netflix has bounced up and down. It's in a long downtrend. So if you traded that to the short side, ever since it started down from 270 bucks or so, um, you've been right. Uh, some stocks are just in downtrends, and until they can show a dramatic reversal, you still keep playing them to the downside. Sometimes there's going to be up movements like we're seeing in Netflix right now, but the first time it hits a resistance level and does a sell signal, that means it's going to start selling back off again. Um, Grim was another another one of those. So I think yeah. Groupon is uh, going to have that problem, and maybe even Facebook might have that problem. All right, here's a couple ones. Um, yeah, you know, somebody's asking about whether we have cross packaging, and the answer is so far, no, we don't. No, we do not have cross packaging. Um, although I'm sure if you're a student of mine or vice versa, um, you know, we could work something, you know, I'm sure we'd really want to give to people different great uh, deals. Uh, someone has the five, the $15 for five, is that the same as the 12 for 12? Or they no, the 12, yeah, the five for five is our package that shows the entry and exit strategies, how to use the uh, moving averages, how to use gaps. The 12 for 12 is a, you get the uh, package that has the 12 major signals, which is a, basically the bread and butter of candlesticks, uh, just shows how to use each of those 12 major signals effectively, what confirming indicators make them work, and what, uh, what was the investor sentiment that built the signal. And once you know what in, the investor sentiment is and you can recognize where that signal is occurring, you've got a very, very strong command of, uh, of knowing when, what, where, what type of price move to expect after that. All right. Well, here's a question for me. Mark, how would you use candles in your volatility trading? Well, I think everybody knows I'm not a technical analyst. Uh, but I would say is, um, especially for option traders, if you're a directional option trader and you have a system such as candles to pick um, when to go long or when to go short, using volatility in conjunction with that would really assist you in your ability to choose, for instance, for a long trade, whether you want to buy calls or sell puts, and uh, vice versa for a short trade, there absolutely is, um, you know, it, it could absolutely, if you wanted to use options for your directional trading, um, you absolutely would need to use volatility uh, as part of that. Um, Steve, if a stock is in a sharp downtrend and has two jo dojis, what do we do if it opens higher the next day? Uh, very simple. You start buying, if it, especially if it's well in the oversold area. Uh, again, your first uh, target is to see what it does once it gets to the uh, 
P-line, the 8 exponential moving average. And number two, if you see doges in the oversold area and you see it open positive, you know exactly where your stop is. It should not trade back below those do doges. Uh, if it does, that means the bulls haven't taken control. You want to be right back out of that yeah, trade. Yeah, well, someone's saying that's Groupon's chart. And, um, you know, I, let me see if I've got... Yeah. Uh, there Groupon is something is what, GRPN? Yeah. Now, would you say there's also something to do with, uh, you know, where is Apple going? Yeah. If, if Let me tell you, if, if we could answer with a stock like Apple, where, you know, if you can answer where Apple's going, you should live on an island. You could buy an island. Right. Notice, but notice, remember, you got dojis at, at the uh, oversold area on Groupon. Mm -hmm. Stochastics are in the oversold area. You've had the doji gap down about a week and a half ago. So to change that trend, you're going to have to see a candlestick buy signal, which is a doji being confirmed, and a close above the T-line. Until it does that, you don't want to be buying this one. You need to see a definite change of investor sentiment, and the T-line is part of that uh, that confirmation that there has been a change of investor sentiment. Yeah, you, you know, notice on the... Stephen, my yeah, joke. Notice on the Groupon chart, they haven't been able to get it back up above the T line with any great uh, enthusiasm now for three or four months. Yeah, you know, my uh, my joke for Groupon is uh, I wouldn't be, buy Groupon if you gave me a Groupon to buy Groupon. <laughs> um, um, so uh, you know how? Yeah, where is Apple going? I, mean, I think that's. Uh, I mean, if you want to talk Apple, I think that's probably something you probably discuss actively in your chat rooms, I'd imagine. Yes, we've got a lot of people trading Apple. Um, and you can read Apple just as plain as day. Every time it went below the T-line, it was time to be out. Every time it popped back up above the T-line, it was time to be in. Uh, yesterday, it had a dark cloud uh, signal, but it didn't close below the T-line. So the rationale, or the, uh, uh, not the rationale, the uh, evaluation was, that this needed to open and trade higher or it was time to get out. If it traded back below the T-line, it was time to close it out. But as we saw today, it came right down to the T-line and then traded up uh, up toward the high again. So all we can say right now is Apple's in an uptrend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. I know they're talking about 700 at this point. Uh, another way to know whether you're near the top is that very simple uh, evaluation graphically. If you start seeing big moves to the upside where it just keeps whopping way up, um, that enthusiasm at the top is usually the precursor to a uh, reversal. Um, how do you use volatility in conjunction with candlesticks? I, I think I already answered that. Um, I think it, it has to do with you know, using, you know, in trade selection is what I would say is probably the right way to, to approach it. Exactly. One is not mutually exclusive of the other. If you combine the two, that's where you start adding uh, the power of the visual capabilities against the uh, using your volatility numbers. All right. And uh, I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, All we, right. Stephen, I'm sure um, you'll send me, we have the slides, I think. We'll send them out with our thank you note if people need them. Okay. And, um, you know, it was a pleasure having you, and, and thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. I hope we can do get this again sometime. As you can see, I'm very enthused about uh, candlesticks. Well, uh, when like, I started this, sounds yeah, when like I started, the, oh, sorry. You know, when I started uh, trading, I was the worst investor in the world. Now I can confidently look at the charts and know that I'm going to consistently pull money out of the market just because every time I put on a trade, I know the probabilities are in my favor that I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, well, it sounds like we should do, for our next webinar, we should combine uh, candlesticks and volatility and, uh, you know, show some, uh, some trade selection with a couple of candlestick charts. That might That's, be uh, real interesting. Yep. All right, everybody. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you having me. All right. Everybody have a great day.